coming up on this episode of the Spiro podcast. So this is like a target. Like if you don't, if your target is too big, you're not going to know where to shoot, not where to, where to aim at. Welcome to the Spiro podcast, managing your real estate photography and videography business with your hosts, Todd Kivimaki and Craig Magler. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Spiro podcast. Spiro is a software platform designed to help you really manage and grow your real estate visual marketing company in a day-to-day -day manner. I'm Craig Magrum, host of the Spiro podcast, and uh, just always glad to be here and love doing this with our owner and founder and, and co-host of the podcast, Todd Kivimaki. Happy New Year once again. I know we're you know halfway almost towards the end of January, but it's still a new year, Todd. Yeah, we can. It's it's January. We can use Happy New Year. Yeah, <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, glad that you are all tuning in again. Thank you. Hey, if it's your first time listening, welcome in. It's mm. it's great to have you in the community. We just appreciate you guys. And uh, have another. We're going to continue with our topic here with the main. Um, when we get to the main event main event. I don't know where I came up with that, <laughs> but maybe I'm making this a little bigger than it is, but <laughs> I just, I went back to the eighties and WWF and welcome to the main. Of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go into announcer. What was voice. that announcer's name? Yeah. Oh, I think what? he still does. And he still looks the same. Is he like a wax figure now? Pro probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember his name. I can't remember. I, I can picture him. I know what he looks like. So I can hear his voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, enough of that. Uh, yeah, we're going to be continuing talking about uh, goal setting and prioritizing goals. But before we get to that, Todd, um, some exciting things coming up, uh, a big event coming up that I just heard about on the, the rep uh, Q&A uh, video that was on last night. Uh, tell us about about the uh, upcoming conference. Yes, yeah, so this is on January 19th, Friday, January 19th. This is a rep team, which is Eli Jones and the team. This is called Vision 2024. So this is great. This is going to go right along with what we've been talking about with goals and seeing your vision and how you can execute and grow your business. And grow could mean many different things. But if you are listening to this podcast close to when we launch this, you have just a day or two to sign up. So please do so. It's free. It's completely free. Uh, there's no hard sales pitch. There's no anything. Um, Eli even said it on the call last night. It, this is completely free. Um, some great speakers are going to be on there. The rep team, um, Colleen Kidd, Warren's going to be on there. Uh, I have a session. So really excited about that. You can get more information at repteam.com forward slash vision 2024 rep has two P's in it. R E P P team.com forward slash vision 2024. So sign up at least if you can't make it on Friday, at least sign up and you'll get the replay. I do that a lot for mm -hmm. uh, events that, that come through from other speakers around these, these are great just to have, and then you can listen to them. I had to go up to Michigan and back the other day. So I got caught up. These are just great things to put in your portfolio, bookmark them. Um, and honestly, there's nothing better than free. So um, please do that soon. Again, that's January 19th. Um, you need to sign up or is is the launch of it is is the um, the vision 2024 kind of online seminar, if you will. Right. Right. Excellent. Looking forward to that. All right. Um, let's talk about Spiro updates. Uh, the, this is always fun because th there's something always happening with with the Spiro software. So what's what's the latest? There is. So we are continuing to work hard on that metric section that we've talked about for a couple of weeks now. That is a big section and we're going to get that launched here fairly soon. And uh, along with that is going to be the square integration. So those two things are being coded right now. Also, what's being coded is a change to the way that we can display your appointment information on your Google Calendar. So Excellent. when you sync your Google Calendar, many of you have said, hey, I want more information on there. We don't do it because all of our photographers, all 25 of them use the photographer portal. We're used to that. We want them to go to the photographer portal because that's where they check in, complete jobs. That's where text messages are sent out, the tracking uh, to subscribers, excuse me. So you're going to have the option that you can turn on full details in that calendar event if you want it. No problem. You just check in. All the details will be in there. Uh, so those are the three things that are being coded as we speak and then hopefully the launch here in a week or two. 
Perfect. Um, and what about the agent referral program? That's something that just rolled out. It did. So agent referral program, this is a great piece of content for you to put in your newsletter. So what an agent referral program is, is you can enable it in your Spiro portal, go to shopping cart, then agent referral and turn it on. And then you set two figures. I call it a give and a get what you will give to the new agent and then what you will give to the agent who referred your business. These can be two different figures. I believe at WOW we're using 50 and 50, yeah. so a new client gets 50 off their first order, and then when that's paid for, the referring client gets a $50 credit added to their account. You can use whatever figure you would like. Also, you can override those figures on a company and on an agent. So if you have an agent that you really just wanna say thank you to them, maybe they're a VIP and they refer you a lot or they refer you to other VIPs, you could give them more than what your default setting is. So mm -hmm. very excited about that. Yeah, can I give two two uh, hacks or, or user tips on that? Oh, I love referral? it, please do. So my role uh, with WOW Video Tours is I'm both a, a photographer, videographer, and also the business development specialist for one of our markets. So my role is a little bit different than the rest of our team because the rest of our team, they're either a photographer or a business development specialist I'm the only one that's hybrid. So one of the fun things I get to do is sell while I shoot. And sell is, that's not the greatest word. It's really more consult. So yesterday, Todd, I was on a shoot uh, in Toledo with one of my agents that I absolutely love working with. And uh, she brought up, hey, how's business going? I said, you know what? Um, we're actually doing about three times what we did this time last year. And she's like, I'm so happy for you. That's awesome to hear. You know, I, she passed on a couple of referrals to me or, uh, late last year. And how's it working out with so-and-so? I said, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I said, in fact, um, that agent referral program that we have for you that you've used, she's like, yeah. I said, well, we've implemented it now in your portal so that when you go into your portal to order, we've got a code that you can just share. You just click on it and share directly via text. It's super simple and makes it even easier for you. She's like, I'm going to check that out. So <laughs> Easy, quick way while you're shooting, you know, maybe if you're still shooting as, as owner, a quick, easy, uh, you know, mention of, of that referral program to continue to build your business or the other hack that I like, I was thinking about this last night, I've got a presentation coming up next week, is if you're presenting in front of a, a brokerage office and you've got a couple of really good raving fans that use you already, show them this agent referral program and say, Hey, so-and-so you can click on this and share this with the rest of your team and show it in front of everybody and talk about the, the give and get, um, that way, mm -hmm. man, you can get a, a brokerage office rolling. If you say you only have two or three agents in that office that are using you right now, what a perfect way to get really kind of a, a an explosive start to presenting to a new brokerage. So just a couple of ideas on how to use that program. Yeah. Oh, I love that, Craig. Here's just one more little twist on if you're in a brokerage presentation, you can. Uh, so, Craig, you were saying just to make sure I understand, you were saying just show a current client of yours, show their code to the clients in the presentation. Is that correct? Uh, especially if the agent that you already have is there. I would say gotcha. that, yeah. like, hey, hey, Vicky, by the way, check this out. You can share this with the rest of your team here and they would all get this credit if they sign up with us and you would get for every one of, it's kind of like a, a peer pressure. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. And maybe you could put them on the spot. This is kind of hybrid to what I was thinking as well. So maybe you could put them on the spot and say, Hey, you know, text message Becky and she'll send you her referral code. There you go. And, or you could say, Hey, text message me, my numbers at the bottom of the flyer that's on that we handed out today. Uh, by the way, we always hand out a flyer when we go in. So you should have mm -hmm. your contact information on it. You could say, hey, just text my number and I'll send you Becky's code. Also, one other thing, if this is a new office for you, the pivot would be you are in Spiro as an agent. So when you signed up for Spiro, we created three ac accounts for you, an admin, an agent, and a photographer. So you have an agent account, which means you have a referral code. So when you could say, if you don't have any clients 
at a brokerage presentation or that client doesn't happen to be there. You know, if the Becky isn't there and, and mm -hmm. you don't want to put someone on the spot, you could just say, hey, text my cell phone number on your sheet. Just text me your name and email and I will email you a link so you can save $50, $100, whatever you want it to be. The cool thing is, is you can set your agent account to receive and give something different. So maybe reset it, set it to receive $0 because you don't need to receive any credit. Uh, another thing you could do is you could set it to receive $1 in credit. And then that way that's a counter for you oh, to see how many that. times it's been used. Just right. a quick thought there. You also get an email when someone uses it, so you could keep track of the emails. Mm -hmm. But you could say, hey, use this, and you'll get $150 off your order. Just set your agent account in Spiro to give $150. The cool thing about that is now you have – who doesn't want to save $150 off? You know, Who right. doesn't want to bank that offer? I know for us, it's, it's always something that we have to keep in our mind is to collect information. You know, we try to do the fish pole or collect the cards, but it seems like you you have 10 minutes and you're trying to figure out who's there and you can't <laughs> always collect who's there. I think this is a good mechanism for not only to collect names that are there, but they're texting your cell phone number. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah. I, we haven't tried this yet. I had the idea too late when I did a presentation with Chris a couple of weeks ago, Craig. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe it's something we want to try, but it's an idea I had and it's, it's all set in there. And I think the agents texting your number is incredible. And also then you can email them. However you want to follow up with them is up to you. But don't forget, you are in Spiro as an agent. Please use that referral code creatively. There you go. Useful tips to help you continue to grow your business. Hey, Craig, I'm going to go off topic here for a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I know we're at it, but I, I just have a question for you all. So, and, and this this is shooting from the hip. This is completely not on our sheet, y'all. So take it for what it's worth. You're getting to, many of you are getting to know me now. I can be a little impromptu. So at WOW, we created a photo editing team. We called that team Creo, which means create in their native language. And we, we use it at WOW. And we have trained them, uh, lobbed and shinned. Uh, we own some of it. They own some of it. For those of you that don't know about Kosovo, it's a cool little, fairly new country in the, in the last 20 or 30 years. And we have a great team over there. And we had the thought about growing that photo editing team. So what I'm saying is if you're looking for a photo editor, I'm not saying that we're a full force photo editing team. I'm just like, hey, I need a couple beta, beta users or people to give us some feedback. We have used this team now for almost two years. They have edited hundreds of thousands of images for us. So these are not new editors. But if you're looking for a photo editor, if you could send me a quick email, hello at Spiro.media, just let me know what type of editing style you're looking for. I'm just trying to collect some information because I love the team over there. I'd like to grow the team. We have some really talented editors and I, I'm, I'm trying to determine if there's a need out there. If there's not a need, I'm not trying to talk you into using Creo. I'm just saying, hey, if somebody you know, for your company, if you are struggling and trying to figure out, uh, you know, I'd like an editor that communicated better, that always hit the deadlines, that understands what I need as a photo media company, just send me an email. No promises here, but I did want to ask and just see if there is a need out there. Um, so again, hello at Spiro.media uh, for what your photo editing needs are. Todd, can I add on to that real quick and, and ask a question? So this team, Creo, that we use, they're familiar with the Spiro system already, correct? Correct. So they're in Spiro. They're accepting jobs every day. And ideally, that's the flow that we would want you to have. If you use Creo or not, you, sh you can have your editor in the system. Mm -hmm. And jobs, tasks can be automatically assigned to them. So that's the way that you would work with Creo is you would come back integrate Dropbox, upload unedited photos. It would automatically get shared to Shend and the team. They would do the editing, drop it back in. By the time you wake up the next morning or around that time, you would have your edited photos there. Uh, you can QC if you like. If not, you can just let the task send out. But just trying to gauge some interest. But yes, you would want we would want to have them in the system for you because that's the way you get the most power of the system. Right, right. Excellent. Okay, good deal. Anything else you want to add on to that? 
No, sorry for that pit stop. Just wanted to gauge interest there. Yeah, no need to apologize. Cool. All right. Well, let us know. Again, Spiro at media. No, uh, hello at Spiro.media. Yeah, thank you. We've only said that email address about a thousand times. <laughs> you think I would know it. Anyway. Okay. Well, let's dive into things here. Um, last week, uh, for the first episode for 2024 of the Spiro podcast, we talked about uh, setting goals, right? A common topic, but some really good insight from John Acuff uh, that you mm -hmm. talked about in his podcast, Todd. Um, we want to we want to dive a little bit deeper into that topic of of goal setting, but kind of specify more about the prioritizing and, and kind of filtering of goals. Um, so let's do a quick recap of what we talked about last week, and then we can we can dive in. Yeah. So we we talked last week about. Uh, that you should be writing down your goals. And what we suggested was that you don't block anything creatively, that you just write it down. There's no goal or idea at this point that I want you to shut down in your mind. And, uh, you, know, the, you know, if you want to build a rocket to the moon, you, you, can, you should write it down. This is a creative process. And I, one thing that is done in this process is that uh, you have to take the initiative to write it down. So right there, you're filtering your goals immediately because will you write down a goal or not? Hmm. I, I think there's like 3% is what the stat was. I, it was yeah. so low. 3% of people actually write down their goals. Right. And, you know, we like to keep them in our brain and we like to think about them and overthink them. And our brains are not wired to be a to-do list or a memory list. Uh, it, right. it, they're really not. That just clogs your brain up and it just kills any creative and flow of your right brain. So will you write these things down? That's the first thing. So um, hopefully you wrote them down and we gave you a couple categories to think about being, you know, what's a personal goal? What's a family goal? What's a spiritual goal? What's a financial goal and a business goal? So those are some categories to get your brain thinking about um, what are your goals. A couple other things to get you thinking, just some, uh, some questions that John gave were, you know, what do I want to achieve in 90 days? Break that a little bit smaller if you're trying to think, oh, no, I hate to do the one year, three year, <laughs> five year. I hate to do that, too. What yeah. do you want to what do you want to be true by March? So that, that's one question. The other is if, if I was the bravest person, if I was the most connected person. So take away some of those, those false terms and thoughts you've put on yourself. Mm -hmm. Get rid of those. And if I was not afraid to outreach to agents, what would I do? Kind of thing. What what was the what was the term that Eli used for that that type of wrong thinking? The, he had a, a phrase. Uh, yeah, a thought error. Thought error. Yeah, I, I've mm -hmm. I've heard it described also as a bad mental map. You have, you have a bad mm. mental map. So mm -hmm. yeah, if that if yeah if you can correct that, take away your limits. What would you do? So yeah, sorry. and and that's kind of back. No, that's good. It's kind of back to the idea that John A. Cuff uses, and he has a book written on this. That's called Soundtracks. Yes. So that yes. if that's a soundtrack of yours that you're not brave, you're not connected, you're not outgoing throw that soundtrack away, Just throw that soundtrack, excuse me, away. Craig and I laughed about, you know, using a cassette tape or, you know, <laughs> I know you all, many of you don't, Bye some man. of you know what a cassette tape is, but throw that thing away. Right. And then, and then the third one is just switching that around a little bit is like, is what frustrates you? What is, because a lot of times it's not until we feel a little bit of pain that we that we make a change so if that's helpful for you that's three quick questions to get a long list yep. so hopefully you all have your list hey thank you for those that sent it to me so mm -hmm. i appreciate that there is some uh great insight that was sent to me thank you for that if that's helpful for you you don't have to by all means you don't have to i'll keep it private but if that's helpful to send me that list hello at spiro.media thank you to those that did send it to me i'm very honored that you uh you know trusted me and, and 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 took the time to send it over you have made the step to write it down and send it to someone else you're way ahead of everyone else so um, you know everyone listening to this right now you're ahead as well because you're thinking about goals but write those things down and let's make 2024 the year that you cross those things off man it feels so good when you do that it, it really does i'm, I'm a yeah. list like i feel productive 
the more check marks I can make on something. Oh, and it's it, great, isn't it? It does feel good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So write down the goals. That's that was kind of the focus of, of the episode last week. So let's dive into them this week, Todd. OK, we've got this list of goals. Now, what do I do with this? How, how do I organize all of this? Yeah, so this is going to be important that this is an important step to make sure that we actually set yourself up for success because you might you might have wrote down that you want to build a rocket to the moon. And that might be something that you do at some point in your life, but it might not be something you do this year. So what you have to do is you have to begin to prioritize these goals. Okay, so I'm going back to a John Acuff. And again, his podcast is called All It Takes is a Goal. And he has a goal community. I mean, the man is, he's, I would suggest you just check him out. Hmm. Uh, he's not sponsored here. I came across him from a, a, a the Global Leadership Summit a couple of years ago. And I've listen to his podcast. So uh, I am not taking credit for any of this. I am just repackaging this kind of putting a spin of real estate media on it. And uh, I, I think he is a leading expert in the idea of how you create goals. So all credit to him. So let's begin to whittle down this list. Uh, so you have a long list. And now we need to look at two things. So two different words to filter this list. The first is personal and specific ish ish is what ish. It so right okay. yeah ish so personal let's talk about personal f first so is this something that's important to you or is this a fake goal you know we had a great comment last night on the call as to like i just feel overwhelmed or i look at others and i feel like they're growing faster than me or they are getting to this plateau before me or i'm not able to and one thing you have to ask yourself is, is this a personal goal for you? Is this your goal? You know, like if you wrote down just as an example, if you wrote down that your goal is to have 25 photographers because we have 25 photographers, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, is that your goal or not? Right. Because if it's not your goal, then it's not personal to you and it's most likely going to fail. You're going to feel overwhelmed. You you might feel um, insecure about it. It's just going to be somewhat crippling to you and paralyzing, especially if you're a perfectionist, that if this isn't your goal, we need to go through that list again and really understand, you know, maybe this is something that my parents wanted or my spouse wants or my kids want. This isn't something that I want. Right. They can have influence on you, but Let's make sure that you really, really care about this goal. So, Todd, I think like a, an example of this is when I had my own business, uh, C Imaging Solutions, I, I had this you know small little real estate visual marketing company that I started here in the Toledo area. And it I grew it over four years. It grew pretty quickly, um, but got to the point where I had to make a decision. Um, I saw bigger companies starting to come in. And I had to make that decision. Your, your example of the 20, you know, bringing on 25 photographers, is that really your personal goal or do you feel pressured into that? That's actually exactly what I was dealing with. I had to make a choice. Mm. Did I want to switch gears and grow the company and turn more owner and go more hands off with the actual creative process? Or did I want to stay, say, smaller in boutique and still have the joy of doing some of the creative work and and leading it. Mm -hmm. Somebody that is growth mindset and, and very leadership oriented in leading teams, they would, you, you have that great mindset of growing it as big as you can. That that was your goal. And sometimes you can feel pressured into that. I, I look at mm -hmm. these other big businesses and it's like, well, to be successful, this is what I have to do. But I don't really feel the passion for it that's when it's a fake goal. Yes. If I feel, if I feel a lack of passion for, Oh, I got to bring on 25 to be competitive. I got to do this. That means I got to switch gears and I can't shoot as much. <sighs> then it's a fake goal. It's not personal. <laughs> mm -hmm. I made the decision. Yeah. I, I wanted to stay where I was or 
find a different solution. Part of that was becoming part of wow video tours and it worked out wonderfully because now I still get to do the creative process, but I still get to do the, you know, the business consulting part of it, but I don't have the pressure myself personally of having to grow to 25 photographers. I partnered with an organization that already does that and does it well. So yeah, evaluate. Do you, does it, does it excite you or is, yes. is it more of a, uh, so there, there's kind of a concrete example of, of a fake goal versus a real goal, personal. Yeah. Goal. And I think that's one. Yeah. No, Craig, I think that's so spot on. Cause I think that's a lot. And it's I, what I've seen on the forums or the Facebook showing my age there. That's what I've seen online. The BBS. And that is the what? Yeah. <laughs> the BBS. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But that's what I've seen the com that's what I've seen the comments be yeah. is uh, do I want to grow? Do I not? And just like Craig said, if you're not fired up about it right now, mm -hmm. just because you say this is a goal doesn't mean all of a sudden like you're gonna be fired up about it. So goals can sometimes seem overwhelming. Overwhelming is different. It's just because you don't know how to break it down than being fired up about it. You can be fired up about accomplishing a really large thing. But if you're not fired up about accomplishing a really large thing, no matter how good you are at breaking it down, you're not going to have the energy, the willpower. Yes. You're just not yes. going to have, uh, you're not going to be able to push it through as much right. as you think writing it down is. So that is the first thing. So it's just a simple, you just insert a because statement. So I want to grow to 25 photographers because because I want to lead a team, because I want to empower those to lead underneath me, because I want to have financial freedom at this level or that level, or I want to remain to be a boutique photography company because I love taking, giving personal care to my clients. I want to give the highest yes. quality media. The relationships are the most important to me, and that's what drives me. Exactly. So just a simple because statement. I think you should go through every one of your goals and you should say, I want to blank because of blank. Okay. And that will begin to help you whittle down or filter down this list and really understand what you have energy about and which ones we're going to work on uh, and prioritize in 2024. Good deal. Good deal. So now Craig, after you have your because statements, Let's talk about the word specific ish. Again, this is a John A. Cup statement. My and my brain I is breaking. This. My my brain is breaking on that term. <laughs> specific ish. Well, okay, so this will help, Craig. He says, in general, general goals fail. Okay. In general, general goals fail. So and this is just setting your this is like a target. Like if you don't, if your target is too big, you're not going to know where to shoot, not mm. where to, where to aim at. So the idea here is, you know, hey, I want to lose weight. This is a very common one in January of the, of the year. I want to <laughs> lose weight. Well, do you want to lose 10 pounds? Do you want to lose a hundred pounds? Do you really want to gain weight because you need to build muscle? You, you know, like, what does that mean? I want to, I want to lose weight. I want to build my business. This is what I think we fall trap into, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to build my business this year. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe that means for some of you, it means more top line revenue. For some of you, it means more bottom line revenue, more profit. Those are completely different things, completely different goals and way different things matter. If you want top line revenue, you're not worried about making money today because you're going to hire people, you're going to market more, you're going to advertise more, you're going to sell more, and that costs money. If you want to grow your business as far as profit, you might be pulling back on those things hmm. because you want to just really get lean and make more profit on the bottom line. So just saying, hey, I want to grow my business, that's an impossible target. Where does that target even exist at? It, if you can't define it, then it's going to be impossible or nearly impossible to achieve. Makes sense. So just your easy hack here is just give it a number and give it a date. So I want to lose 10 pounds by March. Mm -hmm. I want to do a thousand shoots by the end of 2024. 
I want to have an average order value of $250 by the end of 2024. So just a number and a date. And that way you now have a general target. Okay. To, so to summarize, uh, organizing our goals and, and really prioritizing them, we, we break it down into two words, personal and specific ish with mm-hmm. the personal to make it really personal. Ask yourself the because question I want to accomplish blank because of blank. So mm-hmm. that will help us determine, is this really goal? Or is this a fake goal? Is this a yeah. personal or a fake goal? Okay. Get rid of those fake goals. Yep. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then moving on to the specific ish. If we make a general statement goal, we're never really going to accomplish it because there's really no way to quantify it. So what we mm-hmm. want to do is set a number and set a date that an easy way to tr- to try and specific ish the goal. <laughs> My brain yeah. is still breaking on that, term. <laughs> but, but I get it. I get it. Um, I think that term specific ish can help. A, we're we're going to laugh at that. And because we're laughing at it, we're going to remember that and then remember, okay, yeah, I want to lose weight. That's great. How many pounds do I want to lose? And by what date? And, and then you when. can, yeah. And then you can build your exercise plan. You can build your diet plan to help you achieve mm-hmm. that number by that date. Yeah. The more specific you can get, the better plan you can put together to achieve that goal is basically exactly, what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I always use the analogy of a goal is you're setting up dominoes mm-hmm. and you set up a domino train one after the next. But what you have to do is you have to set up your last domino first. So you have to know what that domino is, what is that target From there, and and we'll work on this in coming podcasts, but once you have set your last domino, you know what the target is. So now it is easy to backfill and set your dominoes coming backwards to you to the start date of today or whenever you're going to begin this goal. So you have to set that last domino. And if you don't know where that last domino is at, you can't begin setting up dominoes from today. You don't know how many to set up. And maybe you'll begin tipping that over. You'll tip the first domino over. The first will hit the second to the third. And maybe it will get to the 20th domino. And really, your goal is 50 dominoes out. So you wouldn't even have tipped over the last domino. So we have to know what that is, a number and a date. Make sure it's personal to you because that's going to give you the energy to continue to set up those dominoes and tip them over one by one. There you go. Makes sense. Easy way to break it down. Great way to to get moving for this new year in in, in actually accomplishing the real goals that are, are deep inside you and you're really passionate about. Great information, mm-hmm. Todd. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And again, I just encourage you all. If it, I, I really, if this is difficult for you, I just do it. Write it down. This is difficult for me, so I'll raise my hand here as well. So this is difficult for me to do, but just find some time. Put a little bit of time on your calendar. A time block. Set it for when you don't have shoots right now and stick to that. Don't schedule over it. Don't ignore it. If you skip past it, move it and do this to really set yourself up for success in 2024 and beyond. And like we said at the beginning of the podcast, when you get these things done, you feel really accomplished. And that's how you begin building momentum. And and that is just great to be on. And this, these are the building blocks right now to get yourself set up for that. Put it down on your calendar. Like Todd said, block out that time. I block out time for appointments, right? So I can organize my day and make sure I'm serving my clients well. These goals that we have, like one of my goals, Todd, is to clean the the organi- or the uh, the storage side of our basement. That's mm-hmm. That's been a goal for the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I never wrote it down. It was always up here and I never put a date to it. So, Ah. (laughs) so Gail and I actually did put a date to it, but then we had to pivot and do something else. The date that we had it written down and I haven't written down a new date. So of course it Mm -hmm. hasn't gotten done yet. So very easy thing. Just put it down a a date of when you're going to work on prioritizing these goals as the second step in your achieving your goals for the year. All right. Yes. Yep. There we go. Good stuff. Another great episode. Dodd, thanks for the, the information, especially from John John Acuff. A shout out to him and, and uh, his podcast as well. 
And uh, just want to thank you all again for for joining us every week, whether it's it's the YouTube channel or or you know the audio podcast. Um, we we really enjoy hearing from you. If you have thoughts that you want to add or some tips that have helped you achieve your goals, by all means leave those in the comments on the YouTube channel or drop us an email Spiro uh, hello at Spiro media. And if you want to find out more information about Spiro uh, the the software platform, maybe you're you're considering a software change as one of your goals this year. Uh, Check out the website, again, just Spiro.media. And uh, we'd love to talk with you about that and uh, answer any questions that you might have. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Again, thank you for joining us. Remember, take time, maybe schedule it, to be thankful for the (laughs) blessings in your life and uh, take a breath. You have a great week. Take care. Thank you for joining us for the Spiro Podcast, Managing Your Real Estate Photography and Videography Business. This is a production of Spiro and WOW Video Tours. You can find out more about Spiro's real estate media business management software at our website, spiro.media.